All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started so we can get through this. Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, so I, I wanted before we get into revenue alignment, I just wanted to give you um, a few tidbits about me before we get started. Let me get over to the right monitor here. Um, I am chief marketing officer of a company called Lessonly. Um, we are training and enablement software for sales and customer service teams. We are located and headquartered in Indianapolis, about 230 employees. I have been with the company for four and a half years. So a lot of what we're going to talk about today is uh, what we have experienced as a company going from 40 people all the way up to 230. And you can imagine that there's a lot of alignment issues when that happens. Based off of my career, there's a couple places where I learned sales and marketing alignment, which was exact target sales force and lessonly. But I also learned about high growth SaaS at OpenView, which is a venture capital firm in Boston. And you get to, when you when you work at a venture capital firm, you can imagine you get to see tons of companies and how they think about alignment and how they think about growth. Um, exact target was over 2000 employees. We IPO. We were bought by Salesforce. I got to experience alignment at a scale that is unfathomable for a lot of us, which is Salesforce, you know, that tens of thousands of employees across the globe. Um, and lessonly is more of the growth growth stage, right? Like how do we how do we go from a million to 30 million plus in a way that's meaningful? Um, so uh, everything I talk about has a lot to do with lessonly, but also uh, has to do with some of the things I've seen um, over my career. So, and please throw ideas in the chat if you want to, um, but we can get started. So I want you to walk with me down. Now we can walk down hallways and offices. <laughs> Before that, it was walking down a hallway in your, in your house with kids screaming at you or nobody in there. You know, like, we're not even gonna talk about COVID though. Um, I want you to walk with me down a hallway in an office and I want you to feel or at least imagine what you hear in the office. These leads are absolute crap. I refuse to work marketing leads. It's usually what an overworked account executive, not executive, says. Sales is terrible at follow-up, and our best leads get ignored. Demand gen specialists, they're probably saying that, or at least they're thinking that. Marketing only cares about the press release and how much influence they have. Stressed out VP of sales, and of course, content marketing, sales ignores all the content we create all the time. They never read it, ever. They never work any of the leads we send over. Um, and any high growth software company, any high growth company, you usually hear this quite a bit. Um, it doesn't matter the size. It doesn't matter the scale. There's usually misalignment somewhere um, within a company. And then I have no idea what, what pipeline number they're looking at. They ignore my dashboards. Tons of dashboards. Nobody has any idea what pipeline number to look at. Everybody's arguing around lead sourcing. It's, it's just misalignment across the world, right? Across the entire company. So I've done this presentation quite a bit in front of 200 to 300 marketing leaders, sales leaders, and I kind of wanted to give you a look into what does it mean to have revenue alignment. A lot of times we hear sales and marketing alignment, but I think we need to take it a step further, which is including all business units within a company that create revenue. So if you have a services component to your SKU, if you have the customer success team has a expansion number that they have to hit, quota attainment, it's very important that everyone's aligned on what this means. So it means that you're focused on solving the same problems, that you have goal alignment. OKRs align up and you're talking about them on a quarterly basis. Overall messaging alignment across the board. Strong feedback loops. Marketing is getting the feedback. They're delivering it to people. Uh, they're delivering it to frontline teams. There's no disconnect between the customer and buyer journey. You make sure messaging is aligned. It's how customers talk, not how a bunch of product marketers sitting in a room think the customer talks. Really important to have space to fail out loud when you have revenue alignment, and then you are defining things together. You're defining, an example is like MQL definition is outlined between sales and marketing. And you're looking at the whole funnel, and that's what it means to have revenue alignment. And revenue alignment matters because you grow quicker, you will make investments in the right places, 
customers have a better experience. Um, if you have misalignment, it drives huge inefficiencies. And when you do have alignment, you can take big bets and take risks because the entire executive team, mid-level managers, frontline teammates are all moving towards the same goal. So you can get together and take big bets. It's not just marketing going off and doing something or sales trying to hit a quota. Everybody's working towards the same goal. So when you're working towards revenue alignment, I'm going to talk about what I think the four things, four steps of revenue alignment or the four components of revenue alignment are. But there is a responsibility for each of us on this call to assure alignment. And it's consistent and transparent feedback across everybody. So I wanna make one point really clear. It is not the executive level's job to, to ensure alignment. It is not frontline team members' job to ensure alignment. It is everyone's job to ensure alignment. This is top down, bottom up, meet in the middle. Everyone is aligned and it's everyone's responsibility to align on whatever we're talking about, mostly strategy. Accountability on shared goals. And I really think you need to become, sorry for using this word, besties with your peers. Friendships and relationships matter when it comes to alignment. It's not just the fact that you're all looking at the same dashboard. Very, very important. Um, you have to have some empathy for the other person. And the only way you can have empathy is if you actually grow to understand the needs and the wants of that person. All right, so there's four parts of this revenue alignment. The creme de la creme. I probably just butchered that creme de la <laughs> you would have think I've done this presentation before. Of growth, communication, revenue, enablement, and metrics. And I'm going to walk through each of these and give you examples of how we think about communication at Lessonly, which is a 230 person company, as well as what I've seen in larger companies in terms of how they grow and how they ensure alignment between all business units. So, creme de la creme of growth. So, the first one's communication. The most important part of communication for us is meetings. Uh, I know that I don't want anybody coming in here saying, hey, meetings are terrible. You should never have meetings. That's false and not true. Um, unproductive meetings are bad. Meetings aren't bad. You have to have some type of structure around a weekly and bi-weekly bi meeting cadence that allows for alignment between revenue leaders. Michelle, you can get a deck after this. Yes, I will write it down. We, I will find you somehow. LinkedIn, you can, I have my email at the end too. You can email me. Um, weekly and by, <laughs> reminds me of uh, Wedding Crashers. Everybody can go watch that movie after this. Okay. Weekly and bi weekly meetings, weekly funnel and pipeline review. Um, I think it's very important to put all of your revenue generating business unit managers. So for us, it's services customer success, sales, marketing, all in the same room with RevOps to go over the funnel that you're producing, the forecast that you can imagine, that you, the, your forecast for the quarter, as well as the pipeline that's being generated. We do that on a weekly basis. We have a 30 minute commercial segment and we have a 30 minute enterprise segment and it's every Tuesday morning. And we do it every Tuesday and RevOps runs that meeting. I also think it's important to put some type of revenue strategy meeting at least weekly or biweekly so that you can figure out top level strategy, not just in the weeds granular, what channels are working, uh, how's the funnel looking, what's the forecast looking. And of course, you can test these in your organization to say maybe it doesn't need weekly and biweekly, maybe it should be monthly. But I really think that a meeting of revenue leaders is very important when it comes to growth. Weekly communication. We send a revenue email every week. It's run by RevOps. It's called the weather report. And it, and it lists all the things that are important to the week. Like what's the weather, what's the weather forecast? What's the weather forecast for our quarterly forecast? What renewals are at risk? What, what did we win this week? We do a um, uh, uh, top teammate. Uh, it's very cool. It's sent out to all revenue teams. Of course, you can use Loom for video updates, but also encourage encourage your frontline teammates, um, you know, your individual contributors to meet as well. It will force alignment when you have those people communicating on a weekly basis. I also think the QBRs are important. 
we call them revenue, we call it a revenue and experience summit. You're given revenue expectations. You're, you are tasked to meet with your peer managers to figure out what your OKR should be. And then managers are expected to align and come to the meeting with, here's what we need, here's the headcount we need, and here's the budget that we need to order to hit these targets that you're giving us. So you have the weekly enablement, but you also have the quarterly business review that allows your managers to align OKRs. A lot of times, uh, like the executive team is saying, here are your OKRs, go figure it out. I really think that midline managers should be the one to take the first pass as they relate to company goals, company objectives, so that it's a bottom-up, top-down approach that will force alignment. The other thing that's really important is uh, draft a service level agreement. We call it a revenue handbook. Um, I have HubSpot has a great template around a service level agreement, um, but it's basically here's our agreement. Here's our service level agreement on what the definitions are, how quickly we should work deals and make sure that it's in writing and everybody signs off on it. So you can use it for communication, um, not just for alignment. When alignment breaks down, alignment breaks down because communication is bad, right? But if you have a service level agreement, it's really easy to say, hey, AE, you didn't follow up appropriately. Or, hey, marketing, that MQL was bullshit. So you can keep everybody on the same page. And then the last one is, I always think you should include marketing in your sales kickoff events. Like, I'm, I'm starting to see companies do, do revenue kickoff events, not just sales kickoff. Because every Everyone is involved in the sales process. So here's a hot take. I have hot takes at the end of every of these, all of these. It is the team's responsibility to properly set their teams up for success. It is everyone's responsibility. It's not the manager. It's not the executive. It is everyone. Um, as long as there's a bottom-up, top-down approach and communication when it comes to aligning on targets, OKRs, projects, campaigns. Everybody should be involved in a way that's productive. I'm not saying you need to put 20 people in a meeting. You need to make sure it's productive and that's why it's important. I get to this a little bit later on that RevOps runs those meetings. And I'll talk about if you don't have RevOps, what should you do? Okay, second one's revenue. Uh, this is more of marketing, more catered to marketing. Um, I think marketing should be tied to either revenue creation or pipeline creation, not influence. I think influence is a terrible metric for anyone to use to show any type of relevance. Attribution models, we could argue, but sourcing revenue and sourcing pipeline are the two truths that force alignment. Sales and marketing alignment is about one shared goal, revenue that is delivered or over-delivered every quarter. If you want to have alignment, marketing should be responsible for a sourcing of revenue or, and or pipeline, and their variable comp should be based off of that. There will always be tension, but that tension can be positive if there's a culture of clear expectations and communication. So what do you do if marketing is an influence engine, right? We influence X amount of pipe. You should influence 100% of pipe and 100% of revenue. I'm going to say that again. Marketing should influence 100% of all of it if you're doing marketing correctly, in my opinion. So what to do if marketing is not tied to revenue? You should manage up. If you're a CMO, CRO, you should be pushing your peer to be comped off of a variable number. X amount of revenue generated. Lobby for the marketing leader to take more responsibility of we direct source this revenue. A way to push that, which we did at Lessonly, was to pull the outbound and inbound BDRs, so uh, inside sales, into the marketing team. So the handoff between marketing and sales was much easier because marketing was handing off demos, not, hey, they download this piece of content and some random search engine told us they were interested in this. We think this is an MQL. When there's a lack of definition, conversion rate goes down and alignment breaks. I am a huge believer in variable comp for marketing teams based off of close one ARR and pipeline. And if you are not a leader or a manager, you should bring these ideas to your manager or leader. And why, right? Like 
when marketing is tied to revenue, when marketing is tied to pipeline creation, you have a seat at the table. You have the seat at the executive level. You have a seat at the board level. It's very, very important. And it forces alignment between everyone because you own the creation of the revenue. So measuring direct source, this is a hot take. I've, you, know, you can tell I'm a little bit passionate about me measurement from a marketing perspective as a CMO, but measuring direct source revenue and pipeline should be your primary focus as a marketer. It forces alignment between sales. That also includes expansion revenue. That's not just net new, right? You need to support customer success to drive expansion because the ultimate goal for any software company, especially high growth, is a higher net dollar retention. Higher net dollar retention prints money. Influence and attribution, if you want to do them, should come second. And by the way, that also includes sales because sales should also have a self-source quota that helps on, on the demand gen side. Like an AE. Okay, third one, enablement. It's the most important thing. Uh, sales enablement, rev ops, I think they are the hub that hold everybody together and they should be the center point of alignment when it comes to any organization. So we call it revenue enablement or our team's called revenue effectiveness. It's your job to ensure your teammates are being properly enabled on the go-to-market strategy. Alignment is a team sport, but it's also very important that at a certain growth rate, so if you're talking 10 account executives or 100 employees, you should be looking at an enablement team or hiring an enablement team because they help with business impact, commercial insights, use cases, buyer personas, campaign collateral, and they help with alignment. Revenue alignment is ultimately driven through RevOps and enablement. RevOps owns the data, revenue operations or marketing operations or sales operations, whatever you call it in your company, Salesforce admin, does not matter. They drive data alignment, enablement drives messaging alignment. And the two of those things together, it, is, it will force alignment between all the orgs and you must lean on them to support across all business units. So. I was talking about the weekly funnel and pipeline meeting. RevOps runs that meeting. The weather report, RevOps sends that email. Our OKRs are supported by RevOps. So this is what it looks like in the Leslie org. We have our revenue effectiveness, which is on the left here, enablement, sales engineers, solutions consultants, product marketing. And then on the other side, you have revenue operations, which is all of our tech stack, um, Salesforce, everything you think about from an operations standpoint. Also includes some target setting, uh, budgeting, stuff like that. And every one of our revenue teams are aligned around those two teams. And those two teams are the, uh, I'm trying to think of an analogy that's not terrible, but I can't. So they're foundational when it comes to the growth of our, of our company. So if your current company does not have sales or revenue enablement, you should fight for it. If you're hitting 100 employees and you don't have an enablement person, especially if you have between 10 to 20 account executives, frontline sales, um, you should be thinking about a revenue or, or enablement person. Product marketing can kind of help with that enablement, but it's really about enablement. Um, so you should give examples of great companies if you don't have them. I have one example here. Uh, and most high growth companies across the board have enablement teams, have rev ops. Uh, we're at 230 employees. We have four full-time enablement people, marketing enablement, sales enablement, customer six, you know, it's really pre-sales and post-sales enablement. Here's an example at Seismic, which is a sales enablement uh, software company. Um, Toby Carrington is the SVP of rev ops. He has go-to-market ops, business systems, business like BI, and then enablement. Now keep in mind, this is over a thousand employees. They're a huge company. So he's got a little bit more of a built out org, but he is the center. He is foundational when it comes to data, the tech stack, all the intelligence that has to happen when it comes to alignment between teams. Um, okay, so if you don't have an enablement team or a leader or even RevOps, you need to own it if you believe in this idea of alignment. When I was at Exact Target, we didn't have enablement because this was 2013. There wasn't really enablement as a career. Uh, I was doing the enablement for all of our content marketing using PowerPoint decks. 
I was talking to every sales team about the content we were putting together and making sure they knew three or four things that we could use that they could use in their outreach that pertain to the pieces of content that we were creating. You have to own it if you can't get it from a budget standpoint, but I highly, highly recommend hiring enablement in order to fully align all of your teams as you grow. There's no other way to do it, especially if you're high growth. All right, last one's metrics. It's pretty straightforward. We don't talk about handoffs at Lessonly. Uh, we're involved in the entire, marketing is involved in the entire sales process, pre-sales and post-sales. It's very, very important that as you grow, you are helping every business unit produce and hit their goals. If every business unit is helping each other reach certain OKRs, it's, you will have revenue alignment. You know, if marketing is working with customer success to hit their quota, if sales has a feedback loop to marketing on what messaging is working, if marketing is helping sales, if sales is helping customer success, if services is also getting involved, you have to be involved in the entire sales process. This is not handoffs. I hate the word handoffs. This should never be about handoffs. It should be about driving revenue. We are in the business to drive revenue. We are a business. There's probably a deal somewhere. Um, all right, so hot take. Spend time on defining each stage in the funnel, and it should be a shared def definition. If you remember back in the beginning, I talked about a, an SLA or a, re a revenue handbook. Work with all the business unit leaders to build a service level agreement with all the definitions of, of, the, of the sales funnel, pre -sale, or the funnel, pre-sales and post-sales. So when there's discrepancies, like if you're, if you're hiring 80 people a quarter, there's gonna be discrepancy, right? If even if you're hiring 10 people, even if you're hiring 20 people a year, you are always gonna have discrepancy. It's very important that you have that revenue Bible that you can look at to show, hey, you misrepresented the definition of an MQL or you were supposed to follow up in five minutes instead of 15, right? Like it's very important that you have those in place in order to succeed. Here's an example of a chart that we use for board meetings that shows alignment across all revenue generating teams. Um, if you wanna reach out to me after this, I can send you this deck. I can also send you examples of the weather report and um, of the revenue handbook. We have a template uh, for the revenue handbook. So you can see that closed one, closed uh, annual reoccurring revenue expansion, new business wins, win rate, ACV, rolling day pipe, rolling 180 day pipe. It has every business unit leader in here and it shows how we move across uh, the different quarters. Okay, so very important, I'm almost done. Very important to centralize all reporting with RevOps. I, I feel like I've said this 50 times, but it's, it is so important. This is an example of what our VP of RevOps, Carmen Seat, put in place when she joined. And it's a great scorecard to look at over, over, over uh, arching OKRs for the company. Level zero is basically company objectives. Level one is VP. Level two is the next function down, midline managers. Uh, level three would be director and level four is frontline employee. Um, Salesforce does this, it's called V2 Mom, which is a watered down approach to goal setting. But if RevOps is owning this, there is one centralized place where all this is being managed. It's very, very important for alignment because no, there, is, there is nobody that can disagree with you, right? Because you have it all documented. So from a communication standpoint, it's important for sure. All right, marketing sales should be presenting shared metrics in board meetings. Uh, if you want a way to align two leaders, it's get them in front of the board and they have to share the same metrics. Uh, I think we're seeing anyway a combination of sales and marketing in like the chief revenue officer. But the reality is, is that it's going to continue to combine even with product led growth. It, it will the the go to market teams will continue to overlap and eventually become one, in my opinion. So alignment is very important. You are one team. There's not two separate teams. Like marketing is there for a reason. Sales is there for a reason. It's just very important that you remember that you, you should be presenting together. You should be agreeing on OKRs together. You should be communicating constantly about what you want to accomplish in the quarter. And that's what will drive alignment ultimately.
So the creme de la creme, communication weekly. Revenue, marketing needs to direct source revenue. They need to produce, not influence. Get sales enablement, revenue enablement in the team, get them owning the objectives, get them owning the messaging, get RevOps owning the enablement of the data, sales enablement, owning the enablement of the messaging, the positioning, the use cases, the personas across all revenue teams, not just sales. And then metrics, shared metrics, because you are one team and you report on those metrics together. And I think if you can figure out ways to pick apart each of these to say, hey, we can do this and you put them in place, it's going to be amazing for the growth of the company. So top takeaways and then I'm done. Extremely important to align on a weekly basis with all revenue teams. RevOps should lead the charge. Sales and marketing leadership should build a revenue handbook to agree on definitions of the funnel. And remember, if you want a revenue handbook template, please email me. Marketing should be responsible for sourcing revenue or pipeline. Influencing is secondary and mainly to support brand. Um, I could talk about brand for an hour, but I'm not going to. But remember that sourcing revenue allows you to do cool brand stuff and not have to measure it because you're sourcing revenue and you're aligning on the revenue side. And then if you are not enabling now, you should enable tomorrow. Um, it is, you don't need to hire a sales enablement leader to do this. It's great if you do, but enablement should be everybody's responsibility. Everyone, um, even, even individual contributors. So it's very important to align on a weekly basis and marketing should be responsible for sourcing revenue and pipe. And then you need to start enabling tomorrow. So we got one minute left. Pretty sure. I think it's a 30 minute session. <laughs> If you want to email me, Kyle at Leslie.com. I'm also on LinkedIn, of course. Um, Michelle has a quick question. Uh, slightly connected to the presentation topic as companies align internally aim for X percentage of growth. What's your recommendation in ensuring the product matures enough and internal infrastructure is ready? <laughs> um, I think that's at the exec level, Michelle. Um, I think that the it's, it's revenue leaders' responsibility to uh, sync with product, the product roadmap, and ultimately the CEO needs to own that direction. Uh, it, that is probably one of the more difficult things to do. Um, so good luck. And uh, please, everybody should be aligned. Appreciate it.